Hello guys, what you just heard was a 12 bar uh, blues, an improvisation over a 12 bar blues, uh, mainly um, using lines, so that's quite relevant to what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about uh, leaks or lines, however you like, uh, based on 2-5-1 uh, chord progressions. And actually, today's lesson is going to be based on uh, major 2-5-1. Now you see, most people uh, spend a lot of time practicing their scales and their arpeggios, which is actually fine, but it would be even better if you spend some of this time practicing your lines and building your vocabulary. For this purpose, we're going to learn um, three different 251 lines and one line based in 4 1, so a different chord progression. We're first going to learn them note by note, and then we're going to look at how to practice them after we've learned them. Because to be honest, learning a line is only half the job. There are a few things that we need to do after we learn a line in order to master it and be able to use it however we want and whenever we want. So, let's go to line number one. It is by Charlie Parker in the tune Billy's Bounds over a G minor 7, C7 and F7, 251 to F7. Now, line number two, it's by Chet Baker on uh, Lady Bird. Uh, it's over the, it's on the second chorus, over the 2-5-1 to A flat major, so it's over B flat minor 7, E flat 7, A flat major 7. And let's hear it. And now time for line number three, again by Charlie Parker, uh, on the tune Donna Lee. This one is actually not from his solo, but it's from the head. So let's hear it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now time for um, a line played by a guitarist and actually one of the most, if not the most important jazz guitarists, Charlie Christian, Grand Slam. This one is not a 2-5-1 line, it's a 4-1 line, so it will be B flat 7 going to F7. Let's hear it. Now, as I said before, um, learning the lines is actually half the job. So, we will now look at what to do after you've learned the lines, how to practice them in order to master them and being able to use them anywhere you want. So, the first thing to do is to analyze the line. Let's take one of these four lines that I played as an example. So, let's take the first one, uh, Billy's Bounds by Charlie Parker. We need to analyze it. By analyzing, I mean uh, look at each individual note that connects the chords. So, for example, we have the, the G minor 7 chord in the beginning, going to the uh, C7, going to the F7. So, the line starts on two end and it lands on the, on the F note, which is the, mi the minor 7th of the chord, and goes diatonically back to the the blue note, the flat fifth, which is actually an approach to lead us to C. 
and C is on bit one of the C7 chord, and it's the root of the chord. So we, we mainly have to look at the, the chord tones that are in the beginning of the strong, the, the strong notes of each chord, actually. So C, it's a sort of mixolydian kind of thing here. Uh, I mean, I don't really look at it in terms of scales, I look at it in terms of intervals, but uh, you can think of it as mixolydian or as a flat seven, uh, major six, whatever. Um, and then we go for the F part of the, of, the, of the line, we go to the G, which is the ninth, and it takes us to, to A, which is the third, the major third. So basically we have seventh on the G minor seven, blue note passing note takes us to C on beat one of the C7 chord, and uh, G on beat one of the F chord, lands on uh, A on the two end of the F major chord. So it's again important to look at the strong notes. You don't have to think of each individual interval, each individual note. I mean, it's good if you can, but uh, it's, you know, you can just think of the main strong notes, the guide tones, we call them guide tones. All right, so that's the first thing you need to do, like analyze and know what you're playing in terms of intervals relating to each chord. The second thing um, <coughs> which is really important to do is to learn your line um, in pretty much anywhere on your neck. So, for example, let's play the exact same line an octave below on this position. <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's great to have the line anywhere on the neck, so the reason for that is because if you're playing a lick, let's say down here below, a blues lick for example, you see, it sounds great if you do it here, because if you played your lick here, it wouldn't sound so smooth connecting a low line with a high line. I mean, it's fine to do that, but it's even better if you know your line anywhere on the neck, so wherever you are, you can play it. All right, the third thing to do is, um, because you see, not every song you're gonna play is gonna be in F, in the key of F. So the third thing is to learn the line in various keys. A great approach is to learn it in all keys, going in fourths, so that's e that was F, then you go to B flat, so C minor, F7, B flat, B flat, it's a seven. Uh, then go to E flat, F minor, B flat, E flat. And uh, a cool way to do that is not by transferring the, the exact same line to, you know, the, the different uh, area of, you know, the other uh, tonal key. So you wouldn't go, and then for the B flat part, and then for the E flat part. That's like transferring the exact same figuring. I mean, it's fine to do that, but I would strongly suggest that you limit yourself to a particular area of the neck and do this thing uh, like the different keys in fourths on one area of the neck. So for example, let's go to B flat. That's a C minor chord, going to an F7, going to B flat. So we'll do that here, on our pretty much roughly the same area of the neck, so... And then uh, for, the, um, for the E flat, we'll do a different fingering, we won't do that, which is the same as the F fingering, G minor, the two chord, we'll do it here. I played one wrong note here, so it'll be. Yeah. So you get an idea of how to play the line in various different fingerings. It's very important to do that. Otherwise, you're just learning it in a very robotic way. And uh, it's also very useful to analyze uh, the intervals in the different tonalities that you play. So let's, for example, the E flat. F minor, B flat 7, E flat, it will be 
the seventh now is an E flat, the blue note is a B, the root of the B flat is a B flat here, and then ninth of the of the E of the E flat, third of the E flat G. That's a very cool approach. Uh, it gives you more than just learning a line. You're working your theory, you're working your knowledge of the fretboard, plus you're learning a line. Now we're going to look at step number four, which is actually the most important thing. It's the most practical thing. Um, <coughs> how to use this line in your improvisation. You need to start consciously um, <coughs> adding the line to your solos. I mean, at least when you practice, when you're playing in a live situation, you don't want to force the line, but when you're practice, it's cool to do that. So let's look at an example on uh, Billy's Bounce, how we can do that. <laughs> As you just saw there, I just I played the line, but I sort of altered it a little bit to uh, make it fit what I was playing before and what I was going to play after. So that's a cool way of uh, improvising, using lines but not playing them exactly as they were. Right, I hope you found this useful. Um, it's always a cool thing to know your lines. Um, try to you know follow the steps, like analyze them play them in different keys and I'm pretty sure that uh, learning one line will add so much to your playing even with just a single line and you can do the same thing for not for just for the lines that we went through today but for any line that you know you like to play a cool thing to do is a cool thing to always do is to um, listen to a record uh, listen to a tune whatever and uh, the moment a lick or a line grabs your attention and you're like, whoa, I like that. Pause it, transcribe it, learn it by ear. I mean, if, you, if you're struggling with that, I'm pretty sure that you will find uh, transcriptions online. And then follow the same exact procedure that we went through today. So, if you like this video, uh, you can always subscribe to my channel. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, uh, give feedback or you know, post uh, your improvisations or whatever you want uh, on the comment section below. And uh, stay tuned for the next lesson because it's going to be on 251 minor lines. Take care.